<laughs> okay, we're back live here at HP Discover Day 2. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the event and extract the signal from the noise. HP Discover in Germany, in Europe. Uh, record attendance, growth, HP's got a great event here. This is SiliconANGLE's exclusive two-day coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org and we've got many time guest, Craig Nunes, who's the worldwide VP of marketing for HP Storage. Craig, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, he's a, he's always a, good here. to see you. Yeah, he's a QB. He's a QB. <laughs> I'm a QB is a CUBE alumni, <laughs> so um, great comment, great the idea there. The QB of the CUBE. The QB. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so, so big day on Monday. Uh, yes. We flew in, we saw the, the press conference, packed house at the press conference. It was yeah, uh, a good crowd Standing there. Um, I hosted the, the customer panel, had five customers, and uh, we're going to talk about that. But the announcement's big, Craig. I mean, you guys have been working real hard to rationalize the portfolio, communicate what you're trying to do, get new products out to the market, you know, the bombs are dropping, and you're fighting the competition. This really was a big coming out party for you. The, speaking to the folks on your team, Everybody's really excited, uh, and a lot of work went into getting to where you are yeah. now. So describe yeah. where you are now in your view, sure. and we'll, then we'll talk a little bit about, more about the announcement. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we've talked about this in the past. The, uh, you know, we've been on a journey, right, for, uh, uh, for a while now, and it's something that started really several years ago, and I think probably the, the coming out party, uh, um, you know, mid-11, when we kind of introduced the, the idea of converged storage, storage built on HP's own IP, um, you know, really aimed at, you know, kind of the, the biggest areas of growth for our customers, try to uh, handle that. Um, but what was significant about Monday was really, you know, the other shoe dropping. It's, you know, all of the investment we were packing in and the balance of the strategy that uh, to be honest, it was more meaningfully told with these new product announcements, we were able to you know, bring those forward. And the, the, the bottom line is, um, that announcement was all about uh, uh, simplicity. Uh, in, in fact, we, we talk about something called polymorphic simplicity, which is you know, many um, uh, simplicity that really is available in many shapes and sizes uh, across your storage infrastructure to solve the problems that our customers are dealing with. And today, believe this or not, because in uh, you know, preparing for uh, what we we're going to talk about, we did you know, our homework and our customers deal with upwards of 10 architectures just to get the storage job done for their business, 10. And who is single source these days, right? So 15, 20 architectures to get storage done. And bottom line, big cloud, uh, sorry, big data, cloud, um, all that's going on in IT, mobility. Um, our customers are saying, look, stop. I, I can't cope with that and, and fight the battle with 15 or 20 things that have to change through this, right? So they're looking for something different. So, so poly, many, morphic, shapes and sizes, yep. simplicity, we all know what that yep. means. So polymorphic, sto polymorphic storage, let's face it, you guys are going after EMC's underbelly when you do this. I mean, EMC's got a lot of different architectures. You put up a slide yep. that said, okay, we've got um, you know, all these you know, VNX and, and uh, VMAX, et cetera. I think they had, I don't know, you had seven or eight in the slide. We could yep. probably count up you know, a, a few ten. more. We had 10, ten in the slide. You had 10 in the slide? Okay, so you're going <laughs> after that and saying, okay, we have a, an alternative. What is that alternative? Yeah, so the bottom line is four primary storage, one architecture, low to high, across file block object, uh, across uh, traditional hard disk drives and solid state, one common set of services, uh, one platform to get the job done. And that, that, that's for primary. Uh, and, and for uh, and information for retention and, for and information protection, one architecture, common. Uh, low to high, common services, et cetera. Now, in that realm, we, we believe uh, information retention and information protection are coming together. Uh, most still buy a separate kind of motion, so we have you know, separate products that we offer today, but it, they are built on the same architecture. The same deduplication that runs in information protection is going to be the same deduplication that runs in information retention. It will be the same services, and by the way, the same deduplication that runs in primary storage, right? That's the whole deal. So uh, the bottom line is for our customers, it's you know, 
go from 10 to two or three. Um, with common services low to high, one management platform that's going to handle all of what your storage needs. And when it comes to new things like solid state and flash, you know, HP is not a company who's going to run out and buy something. We've got the platform to deliver it. We're not going to add to our customer's pain in, in uh, introducing capability like that. So less is more in this paradigm. In um, a big way. So, okay, but, but at the same time, there's no God box. You can't have the same box to primary and backup and archive. Um, you've, you've, you've got to have different platforms. So there's still a horses for courses um, requirement in the marketplace. We can agree on that. Yes. Um, your strategy, let's start with primary, is a, is a single architecture for primary, which is really built on 3PAR. Built correct? on 3PAR, the success okay. we're having there, yeah. And you're attacking um, your competition, EMC in particular, but there are others out there sure. that are you know, putting forth this pure horses, I say pure, more horses for courses strategy. We got this product for that problem, this product for that problem. 3PAR is your answer for primary. Right, that that's store, right. what's now yeah. called store serve. Right? Three par, store serve. <laughs> yeah. Now, people say, I would say, well, wait a minute, still got a bunch of other architectures. You got sure. EVA, you got MSA, you got uh, what, what you call a uh, uh, store virtual, which is left hand. Yeah. Um, you have all these other architectures. Isn't that yeah, so pipe central? Yeah, so, yeah, so great question. Here's, here's kind of how we, we look at it, how our customers look at it. We've got customers where they are today, right? Where HP, you know, was a couple of years ago, right? We've got a lot of EVA out there, um, you know, buying XP today. Um, and, you know, those customers are in various states of readiness to get to what's next, to get to converged storage, right? And we're not going to leave those guys high and dry. They've got needs today. They've got a business to run, service levels to maintain. And so for those guys, we have what we call our established platforms. But for customers who are uh, ready to move, or frankly, for the market we're not serving today, and it's a fair bit of it, that HP is not the you know, storage choice, uh, the, the, it is converged storage. It's you know, three part, store serve. It is store all for information retention and analytics. It is store once for uh, deduplication and backup. Um, you mentioned store virtual, that's, a, that's another uh, a great segue, because part of the approach here is not just um, delivering for storage systems, but we have a set of customers, a set of CTOs who are thinking a little differently about their infrastructure. They, they will only take on uh, storage services uh, in a way that's completely de decoupled from the underlying hardware infrastructure. It's a cost issue, it's a lock-in issue for them. Um, and uh, so, you know, a more software-led approach, software-defined data center, software-led data center approach is kind of where they're headed. Mm -hmm. And our um, lead platform there is Store Virtual. Store Virtual, you know, frankly, was born as that before the term was coined. It's been in the market as a virtual storage appliance. That's how software-defined storage will be delivered. And the 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 idea with software-defined storage is, it's obviously it's got to be, uh, you know, software-led. It's got to be able to, you know, spin up a controller in a VM or, you know, lay it down on a standard x86 server, right? Um, it needs to. So, we'd like it to run on our servers, but it'll run on Dell, IBM, whatever. Mm -hmm. Our current store virtual BSA. Um, it'll run in uh, any hypervisor, right? We've got customers who are. Uh, got a, a couple of hypervisors running. Again, uh, the lock-in factor. Um, so taking an open approach there. Um, and what we're finding is, um, call it the hardware is caught up. You know, why now? We've been doing this for five years. Uh, processor, horsepower, huge, right? There are cycles in the server that aren't getting used that can be tapped for this. Drives, three terabyte drives times however many in a server. There is capacity in the server wasted. Spin up uh, software to find storage, take advantage of what's on the floor. We've seen people um, save 50 to 60% of their power, cooling, floor space by deploying this stuff. 70 to 80% of their storage costs 
Because remember, they're basically tapping something they've already bought. Um, and uh, for these guys, a very uh, um, uh, easy way to grow, right? It is, it is polymorphic uh, simplicity, right? right? Software, systems, so Craig, Polymorphic. so the, so the came up yesterday, the whole hypervisor thing, agnostic was a big message. We had Sam Johnson on, who's a friend oh, of the yeah. Cube, you mm -hmm. met him. Um, he's an, kind of an analyst, kind of, but he's a blogger, but he's kind of like an analyst. He works yeah. at uh, yeah. a big company, but he's really well regarded in the cloud space. Sure. This hypervisor agnostic thing is a huge deal in the cloud space. Now you guys are talking about that storage. So that's very, very cool. But one thing that I wrote about on my blog uh, two days ago on the announcement that I found really compelling was that you guys have lightning in a bottle. I mean, this whole software-defined storage uh, direction um, is really a great pivot with software-defined networking. Because that's where all the buzz is. But you guys have actually three sets of products there now. And, and so that's really, really relevant. So I think you guys have lightning in a bottle with the positioning in, 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 with storage, networking, and servers. Um, the other thing that we've talked about with autonomy is in the big data space, right. there's a big conversation around where to put the data. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, what you guys are doing that's innovative against, against the other guys and your competitors is that you're putting the data near the storage, you guys are thinking about the data. So I want to ask you, how do you look at that and, and what, what's the current plan and Obviously, the new horsepower, the new yeah. 7000 is, is a whole nother level of product uh, at a price point and, and all those good savings, but relative to the big data explosion, yeah, yeah. I mean, autonomy was up on stage with you guys. Right. You didn't really talk about that because it wasn't part of that big announcement, but it's such a relevant yeah. piece to yeah. your piece. Can you yeah. share Absolutely. the big yeah. data story and how that fits with software yeah. defined or software yeah. led? Yeah, so, so the, the, uh, to kind of catch everybody up, the, the announcement was about bringing a uh, no SQL database inside of the storage platform, inside of your unstructured, your storage of your unstructured data. And, and why? So that uh, uh, you can get at your hundreds of millions of files, and, and uh, you know, if you start going through it, people are closer to that than they might realize. Um, to search that, uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, if you've got 500 million files, and if they're 100K files, guess what, that's only 50 terabytes, right? We're not talking about a, a, a lot of capacity. 500 million files will take you 42 hours to find something, right? You got somebody consuming a, a ton of capacity uh, to the point where they're burning through your buffer. Um, you could well be out of capacity before you find out who is doing it, right? If it takes you 42 hours to find it. Uh, express query, uh, 1.4 seconds on 500 million files, right? So that is, you know, that is the only way folks are able to stay ahead of the massive unstructured growth coming in or taking advantage of data that's not their own, right? I, you know, I'm a marketing guy. I t take a look at Twitter feeds, social media yeah, feeds, yeah. and the only way to keep keep on top of that is to be able to mine that instantly. Well, you know, Dave and Dave, David Vellante and David Floyer will go into the weeds and talk about all the speeds and feeds of the storage, um, which is cool. I let them do that, because um, I, I don't want to, but I, they do it. I love the technology. You know, but, the, but what I'm impressed by <laughs> is, what I, is the holistic view that you guys take with the market. Like, it's very rare to see a storage-focused group look at the marketplace from a holistic perspective and saying, hey, we got to think about storage from the perspective of capacity and performance Okay, table stakes in the storage business, but hey, we got to have low latency analytics, support the analytics, yeah. support the, the big data uh, piece because that is where the growth is right yeah. now. So, yeah. so one, is that, and what is your holistic view there? I mean, do you look at big data as, hey, do we just got to store some stuff, or what are you guys doing in the software particular that speeds that up? Yeah, so it, the, the, approach, you know, the approach is kind of a, a pr product management 101. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know that I'd call it you know, anything crazy, but it's uh, you know, just kind of tuning in to the pain customers have with you know, their, uh, their uh, unstructured data or content depots or whatever you want to call it. And the fact that, I mean, we have customers today who you know, are you know, putting up with loads of files and the, the workflow it takes to get through it. Um, we are a little different though. We are able to go uh, partner with uh, our our uh, brothers at HP Labs and sisters, um, 
and and when we kind of talked through the problem uh, with them, they were the ones who kind of you know helped us with this uh, this notion of you know bring you know bring this tool into the storage platform. And what we learned in working with our our autonomy team is what they go through to find and filter data. Uh, you know, it'll take ten servers four days to do what we're doing now with one server in a, you know, a few seconds. So, so suddenly, you know, number one, it's kind of, you know, hey, convergence, we've been talking about it, it's real, it's happening, it, it happens to be uh, all happening on So store other all. vendors sell a bunch of platforms, right? So you guys, you guys said, okay, you're one platform, you know, about, et cetera, but you actually have a lot of other platforms that you're supporting, but you're driving all your new customers to this Converge new platform. Storage. So it's not like you're selling, you're still supporting and of selling, course. I guess, upgrades. You're not onboarding new customers Correct. to the old stuff. Correct. Right? So That's you're exactly positioning right. one platform out there. That's right. The three par. Yeah. Yes. Core tech. And, Can you and explain that? Because that's hard for me to understand. So yes. Like, so um, and and kind of to a point uh, that Dave raised uh, a minute ago, uh, we've got one architecture, one thing for primary storage. Again, whether it's solid state or hard disk, whether it's object or block, it doesn't matter. Um, we have one thing for information retention and information protection, but the services that our customers will touch, the data services, th those are going to flow across both, right? When we're doing um, encryption, when we're doing uh, deduplication, compression, same approach across both. Management, common uh, across both, but the, the underlying architecture, you know, we've got three par and we've got uh, the store one, store all uh, stuff. And that is, uh, we, we think, you know, the, the way of the future and we've got it today. This, you know, the vision David talked about, we deliver right now, right? So it is vision, but it's, uh, it is real. It's, uh, you know, it's what shipping. the big announcement was it's all about. It's a shipping product. Shipping. Okay, yeah. but, but I need you to talk about SSD flash because, sure. because um, you basically, you have this uh, primary storage architecture. Flash is changing everything yes. in, in primary storage. Are you, gonna, are you gonna just dump Flash on top of 3PAR? Can 3PAR handle that? Is that, the, is that the Flash platform? What is the Flash play? Yeah, so, so the Flash platform, unequivocally, is 3PAR. Um, wh why, how? Look, the reason uh, HP picked up 3PAR a couple of years ago was because it is a modern architecture built for you know, all of the stuff that's going on out there. And if you think about um, you know, uh, what uh, uh, is going on in Flash, there's a lot of uh, small companies, right? I love that. I, I, I came from one of those, right? Um, but I've seen that movie, and let me tell you how, how it ends. Uh, it can end three ways. First, uh, you go out with a killer feature, um, and it's probably not Flash, because guess what, we all buy from the same guys. Right? Yeah, it's not it's the probably Flash the itself, it's not the medium. Right? Yeah, but you have software. a killer feature, and the, the incumbent, the big guy, says, uh, uh, interesting, I'll have it in a year, and they freeze the customer. So, you die by inertia, right? Um, uh, number two, it's about software, not the Flash. So what are the data services? Where's the QoS? Where's the uh, the DR? Where's the HA? I mean, we're talking about half a million IOPS on a box. You better be protecting that, or you're losing, you know, who knows how many applications. Um, so where is that? It's not an investment issue because, as a small company, you're well out invested by the big guys. It is a probably an architecture issue. Um, so. You know, a lot of those guys are in the market to work out how they solve a problem for a big guy. Extreme IO, EMC, perfect example, by the way, adds to that complexity picture we painted, right? That was number 10. That was, that was number 10, the most recent. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, if you uh, are in the market without those data services, hot box, I, I don't know what kind of traction you're going to get. And, you know, I know one of the guys out there builds themselves on, you know, able to deliver quality of service, pin it to the application. Guess what? We introduced that Monday, right? Not just pin it to the application, we'll pin it to the tenant, and we'll support multiple tenants' applications on the box. You can 
guarantee QoS or you can over provision. So three part is the, the future of the solid state platform. It is the future of the solid state yeah. platform. We introduced a solid state version of the uh, 7000. We also uh, announced uh, that uh, a optimized uh, solid state platform or flash platform is coming on the three part architecture. Great. All right, Craig, this is always great to see you. Appreciate you coming yeah. on. Congratulations yeah. for the announcement. Thank Good you. Luck yeah, it's watching. great. Okay, this is theCUBE. We are here at HP Discover. Big announcement from the storage group uh, from Craig and uh, his team. Uh, a lot of press and congratulations again. And uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>